So it's day 14 of the great Overland adventure and we have our longest journey yet on one single day. That's 800 kilometers that we're going to cover all the way from Milan to Reims in France. And we're going to stop over in Geneva for a bit uh, on the way. Those four days in Milan has helped me brush up on my Italian. And so I'm going to say Arrivederci, Italy. And it's soon going to be Hello, France. So we've crossed many borders before on the great Overland adventure, but this is the first time I'm crossing a border through a tunnel, and this is quite significant. It's 11.6 kilometers long. Yeah, evidently getting the Moblon Tunnel, that's what it's officially called. You have to see that it's been built what, about over 50 years ago. Works well. Before the tunnel was built, the tour from Italy to France was actually quite a There is actually long. three days. Yeah, that, that's three days. Yeah. So this mountain was a major barrier you know, in terms of a trade link as well. Let's get on our way. I think we'll explore more of the Alps. Uh, it, you know, the snow-covered mountains are right next door. So we're back to discovering abandoned tracks. This one doesn't look very abandoned. It's actually a very busy public road. This is the one in Reims in France. A lot of races used to happen which started around 1920s and lasted for about 20 years. The reason why this was famous, this was actually a 7.3 kilometer stretch and 2.2 kilometers each of straight line speeds. There was a lot of fast racing happening. Yeah. And you know, in those days of uh, not so much safety, you can imagine it was fast and dangerous at the same time. Yeah. I think we should just go explore the grandstands. It looks a nice point. Let's go. Yeah. Interesting to see all this heritage signs still preserved. Castrol from many decades ago. You see another variation of Castrol there. Total, of course, today is a completely different sign. So in the early days of motoring, Panhard was a famous brand of cars. And the brand, of course, closed down many decades ago. But it's interesting to see the ad still exists. They tried to revive the race in 97 where they wanted to pay a tribute to it. But that got called off due to some technical reasons. And uh, that race actually didn't happen here. Si tu voulais, le printemps serait long. Et si je pouvais, je changerais le monde autour de moi. Pour nous, pour toi, pour cet instant-là où tu m'attends pour la dernière fois. Well, we're into day 15 of the great Overland adventure and I can't believe we actually zip past two weeks of this journey, almost clocking 6,000 kilometers already. 
another 250 kilometers all the way to Calais before we cross over to the English Channel and it's United Kingdom coming up next. Kind of exited France. We are now at the UK border control. We're going to cross the English Channel into the United Kingdom by a train. So we're going to be underwater in a train and in a car inside the train. This is perhaps one of the coolest things I've ever done in life. So we are now inside the Euro Tunnel train, which will transport us from France to UK under the English Channel. It's a moment that I'm never going to forget. The cars are on board and I can't contain my excitement as we got on to the carriage. And strangely enough, Ishan's on the other carriage. We'll be just split by two shutters in between. I'm definitely gonna enjoy this moment. I'm gonna wait for the train to start and drive me to England. I think it's a journey time of about 35 minutes. We'll be in England. So we're getting to our destination, uh, we're almost there. Almost there. I tuned myself coming from India to Europe to drive on the right. Now back to the left, and when I come back to Europe, back to the right. So yeah, this is going to get slightly confusing as we go along. So day 15 of the great old adventure. We're going to be on the right side of the road, the left side. And uh, I can't wait to get these cars off the carriage and slowly get onto the platform. So now we're in England and crossing over from France to England on the Euro Tunnel train was probably one of the easiest border crossings I've ever done. Now we have another 200 odd kilometers to cover and our destination for the night is the town of Brackley. It's time to speed up things here on the GLA Adventure. We are at the Mercedes-Benz AMG Petronas Formula One team, the headquarters. This is where all the racing action happens. So this is the center where the whole Formula One car development takes place. This is where they do the improvements. This is where they make sure that the drivers have enough firepower to win the races as you know the team won last year. They're leading this year and they just had a very successful Italian Grand Prix. Let's go in and see what's inside. Sure.
Here at the center is the car that won the 2014 Formula One Championship. Of hard work is coming to an end. It's Lewis Hamilton, champion of the world. This is the actual car that Lewis drove across the finish line at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix last year. And I like this little piece of information which says, you know, we preserve it in the most original condition, so don't touch the car or try to climb in. That seat is reserved for Lewis Hamilton, so we're just going to stand outside and admire the beauty. You remember Lewis signed number 44 in the GLA? Here's number 44. The company is kind of proudly displayed all its wins so far with a large trophy wall. See the difference between the 2014 China Trophy and the 2015 China Trophy. This is a very interesting trophy, Bala, from the Australian Grand Prix. If you look at old race cars, especially Italian cars, cars, it's the steering wheel. It was called the Motolita steering wheel. Here, you can see the trophies from the latest win. These are both trophies from the Imola Grand Prix. A very special guest on the GLA adventure, the head of the Mercedes-Benz Motorsport Division, Toto Wolf. Glad you could join us on this epic journey of ours. It sounds a little crazy, yeah. It's quite a road trip. Um, I'm happy you made it until here. <laughs> uh, knock on wood, it's gonna continue well. I see you smiling a lot these days. You're having a fantastic, you know, season. Have you changed anything this, this season in terms of the strategy? As a team, it's, uh, it's not a static um, structure. It's a dynamic process and you need to adapt the team to new circumstances all the time. We're having sporting and technical regulations changing every year. Uh, you're having competitors coming up, others disappearing, and the organization needs to be developed. So this is an ongoing process and we try to optimize wherever we can. We try to be more efficient because an efficient organization is a powerful organization. So therefore, constant challenge. This is a very special car for you, I'm sure. Yes, absolutely. We wanted to have a straight fight between Nico and Luis at the end. And so on one hand, I was very happy for Luis to win the championship. And on the other side, uh, Nico broke down a couple of laps to go. So it was a bit bittersweet at that moment. Yeah. But um, what is the future looking like? We're trying to make the car very compact. We're trying to fit the most efficient hybrid engine and the most efficient cooling into a bodywork, which should be efficient aerodynamically. And these kind of technologies then feed back into a road car. And on the aero side, we benefit from each other. So there is a big interlink uh, between the organizations. Uh, we have another, the GLA park ride. You want to have a look and see yeah, what we're driving? I'd love to, yeah. It is a spectacular car. <laughs> I think you will be at getting a lot of attention with that car. Yes. Have you done any long road trips yourself? Uh, any specific routes that you like to take? Well, I've been involved in rallying. And as a rally driver, you spend a week at the rally venue and you do a lot of Reiki. So I've done thousands of kilometers during a week on rally tracks, uh, trying to memorize uh, or learn the track. So I haven't done a long road trip from A to B, okay. but I've been around in circle through the same uh, kind of road sections, which was a different mentally tiring exercise. Well, thank you so much for joining thank us on much. GLA Adventure. And you continue your road trip, drive safely, sure. not too fast, but the Mercedes will not let you down. <laughs> well, it's been a fun, fun day, discovering some of the secrets of the success of the Mercedes Formula One team. Yeah, we got to see a lot of stuff that you would normally never imagine. The carbon fiber manufacturing that they do, the machining that they do, and how much research and development goes into a Formula One car and to keep it winning. Yeah. So interesting day. And the interesting part about that race control room is that it's Tata Communications that is providing the network. So there is an Indian Connect right inside, providing the link between the pit crew and the race control room. Yeah, not just the pit crew and the race control. The link between the car and the sensors in the car to the pit crew to the race control. So yeah, the whole communication package is handled by Tata. And there is even a button there that will communicate right from here to the driver himself. So that's like a button that nobody wants to touch. So the concentration levels need to be really high.